Hey, Nikita, we need you. You ready? I like weed. I really, really, really like weed. So much that if the moment arrived, I'd gladly beat your ass for one ball. Even though you're my brother, I like weed. I like buds, I even like the leaves. Those stems and seeds bum me out. I still have to say I Welcome like to Between Two Strains. Uh, today we have Josh, uh, which is one of the originators of the OG movement a strain that we all love so much. Um, thank you for being on. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure, man. And tell me something about yourself, man. Where are you from? I'm from the East Coast, from New Jersey, but moved out here to uh, San Fernando Valley in, uh, when I was 14. Um, that was in 1987. And uh, grew up basically here in the valley until uh, about 91 and moved over into uh, Los Angeles. Nice. Um, well, how long have you been cultivating for? Uh, been doing this better part of 20 plus years. Wow. Um, I know we're sitting next to one of yours. I think you're sitting next to one of yours. Uh, this are, It is. Uh, this is a Club 33. What does that strain mean to you? This strain has defined my life, you know, where I've moved, my work, um, getting this strain out to people so they could have this. I always believed that it was some of the finest smoke and uh, it's been a pleasure being a part of it this long. I, I feel, I mean, I feel blessed absolutely for crossing paths with this strain when I got it and uh, that was at the very beginning. So extremely fortunate to still be working with her and in that uh, now more than ever, um, people get to enjoy her all over the world. Um, I get to hear about it, and it's just I take great joy in that. Huh. How did you? <laughs> now, and you know, when I, I started, know, look, when I started growing too, um, basically the game was people grew in soil. Mm -hmm. And there were people growing, you know, indoors in uh, Los Angeles, but really I think the hydro game in the mid 90s is what really changed things, including this strain. So this strain hit the streets at the same time, I believe that a new way of growing uh, was developing indoors right. in Los Angeles. Let's, let's, let's get to this, the OG story. How did you get it? <laughs> well, um, in 1996, I had uh, been looking for a place to live and I had two buddies from Florida um, an old friend and a new friend moved from Gainesville. They had just finished school at uh, University of Florida. Um, we ended up moving into a townhouse in Silver Lake, California. Um, at this point, I was looking for a house that I could grow in for the first time. And uh, one of the guys, his name's Matt Bubba, people know him as, and he was one of my roommates. So together, we kind of, you know, started growing in this house. and. Uh, he, at that time, kept talking about this strain that was in Florida. And um, at the time, I was growing NL5 uh, Hawaiian and NL5 Purple Indica and all these other strains I had gotten from Mark Emery up in Canada. Um, so he, you know, I tell him, there's no way that you have something better in Florida that we have here in Cali already. Right. Um, so I kind of like edged him on and egged him on and he went out there and he went out there and got some cuts. Um, flew back with him in his pocket on the plane and uh, brought it to our place and then showed me how to, how to clone. And we ended up uh, getting a couple of those plants to root. One of them was a Kush. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was another one that was a Bubba. And uh, there was another variety too that mm -hmm. ended up getting phased out. Did you think it was gonna be as big as it was? Well, absolutely not. Oh, I, I, There's I, no way, like, any of us could know what we, we had. Right. You know, there, we were, of course, searching for the best. I mean, that's what growers do. Right. And uh, when we first harvested and had the first taste, you know, then we knew. As we sat there, and, I mean, that was the most stoned I think any of us had been. 
at least for me. You know, it seemed like somebody forgot to pay the rent for like two months and we smoked it all until it was gone. And then it was like, wow, what the hell was that? You know, right. but I had clones of her. So we already had another room going and, and uh, we were really excited about, really, really excited about it, except that it didn't produce very much. Right. So that was not, you know, that was, that was the big, that was something to be conquered later on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely conquered that one. Um, well, I see a lot of people have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty great to see what other people are doing. I mean, I was never, I, I never consider myself, you know, like a top grower. And it's been fun to watch now, like other communities um, and other people I know take it to a whole le a new level. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's sharing the information. I mean, the, the amount of uh, good information now out there um, right. that's being shared is incredible. Right. I mean, I think that is a, the basis for people to be uh, enjoying, you know, enjoying this plant at its top form, you know, all over the place. I mean, that's kind of a new thing. Right. Know? OG is still hard to come by. She's hard to grow. I mean, right. I'd love to light one of these up with you, man. Uh, you got this one. You got that one. Let's just light them both. Let's, let's just light it. them both. Yeah. We'll just swap. That because seems appropriate. One's one, the other one's the other. <laughs> so that'll just be appropriate. So as we light these up, man, uh, I think this is the most common question anyone gets asked if you're in the industry and they got like a bud tender or, you know, growers and all this other stuff that do grow OG. What does OG stand for? Okay. OG stands for original. Okay. It was, to me, it was original. To my small crew here that were growing it, it was original. It turned into original gangster because we live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I believe though that the original Gangsta wasn't the first name that was added to it to, to define this variety, mm -hmm. you know? It was like, imagine going around and after the first year of it, its existence, after it had got around town a little, because before this strain came out of our crew, it was not in Los Angeles. Right. So this was a new thing for everybody. Um, and people of course started calling um, I'll take this. Yeah. Can we do it like that? Yeah, why not? Um, it was the first time people started calling other varieties that they had Kush to sell it. So here, you're, we were trying to like, you know, say, people were like, what kind of Kush is this? That was the first time it was like, well, it's the original Kush. And then, you know, there are some guys in my circle who were like, this is the OG Kush. Then it turned into the Ogers. And then that was kind of something. Well, we all know that there are different names for this variety as it traveled to different hands, to different houses, to different <coughs> counties, different cities. You know, people call it ocean grown. I hear that a lot. And people are like, it, that's cool. If it's grown by the ocean for them and they want to call it OG ocean grown, I mean, that to me is fine. But it's also to our original circle kind of... It kind of funny, you know, because they're claiming it in a way as if they had produced that strain. They had created that strain. Mm -hmm. And in no way, shape or form did I create that strain. Uh, I was just lucky that it came into my hands here in Los Angeles. I was a dedicated grower and I was dedicated to getting some good flowers out there. I was happy when I came across the Kush. I mean, it changed my life. It created a whole movement out here. You know? yeah. The fact that it was OG Kush after a few years of that, then we walk in and it's like, well, what kind of OG Kush is it? You know, then it's like, you hear all these different varieties coming on. Talk about this Club 33 right next to you, actually. Um, this is your cut, but it is also uh, same as the Illuminati cut, right? That we do at Coast to Coast, right? Exactly. It's right. the same thing. The, the Club 33 is just another good example of the plant being cared for by somebody else at a different location and it's with their personality and their style of growing changes the plant in ways because the plant's adaptive. Um, the resin profile usually stays the same, <laughs> um, but you know, the structure and the overall, I would say, uh, you know, quality of the plant changes, you know, right. from, from different hands. So, you know, you would expect that. Right. You know, if you gave the same ingredients to different chefs, it would come out, you know, the dish would always come different. out different, you know, and uh, the plant actually adapts to different environments. Yeah. And it's fun to watch different, the same cut that I had go to different parts of the city, even the world and see, you know, how it comes out in different areas, different altitudes. It's pretty awesome. You know? Where else can anyone else get, you know, good 
If you want the original OG cut, uh -huh. you can come to Coast to Coast. Uh -huh. It's the Club 33 uh -huh. and the Illuminati. Uh -huh. um, this is the this is the same strain that's been going on for 23 years now. And uh, if anybody's interested in getting in touch with me, they can go to my Instagram, which is the Real OG Kush Story. Um, also, I just like to give a shout out to the bakery in Seattle, my good friends out there, and uh, to Oregon Kid, who's up there and uh, making his way. And uh, give a shout out to Soto Hydro. Um, best hydro store I've ever been to. Um, and uh, if you want to see some of my products, and it'll be at the bakery in Seattle. Um, and dude, I'd like to thank you very, very much to, for sitting between two strains with me. It's been extremely informative and my head feels very heavy. Yeah, it's been great, <laughs> thank man. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, my absolutely. Pleasure and Thanks really for having me on again. Place. Thank you. This song is done, so excuse me while I smoke some weed.